So, good day. Um, nandito na lang tayo sa klase natin ngayon. It's, um, it would be our last topic on the finals. Isasali natin to, even though this were not included sa activity na ginawa natin. And we are now in the week 13, probably our last topic na talaga. Mental. Um, it is this barangay in Davao City. And it's going to talk all about this being the little Tokyo, the freeware of the Philippines. Okay? So, learning objectives natin by the end of the lesson, the student will be able to recognize the significant tool of mental during pre-war, appraise the historical value of heritage sites mental, recommend programs and projects for preservation of heritage sites in mental and other significant areas in Togbok area. So, few people know that Davao City and Japan share a rich historical bond. Kasi nga, during war, Para kasi yung kuha natin, mindset is kalaban yung hapon before, yun yung typically. But more than a century ago, there was a thriving community of around 30,000 Japanese in Barangay Mintal in Davao City, then the city's economic center. What remains of the community a century later are few Japanese mementos, cemetery and monuments that serve as windows to the past. So, di ba oftentimes, ito yung um, pag hindi man gumuho yung mga monuments na to o hindi man natabunan ng tubig um, typically, ito yung mag, mga binabasihan ng mga historians ay ito pala, meron tayong artifacts or monuments na naiwan okay, ganun so in an urban legend that during the commonwealth area the Japanese community that settled in Davao was among the most progressive in the early days of Davao and left behind a long-lasting legacy that influences us to this day. In fact, it can be said that they can set up the broad strokes for much development and economic blueprint of the modern Davao. So accordingly, though, it helps. No? At some point, it, it build a blueprint economically in Davao City. And we know Davao City being the hometown of our president, Rodrigo Duterte, is indeed economically progressive. Probably the only city in the county where Japanese imprint is so strong and so beneficial. Um, I've been in Davao, I, I think, but it was on Tagum City. But it is on the Davao del Norte pa rin. Madami talagang, uh, mayroon naman ding ilang mga Japanese doon talaga madami. And oftentimes din, um, mayroon akong pinupuntahan doon tindahan, I think Japanese yung may-ari. Probably the only city in, um, in the country where Japanese is spread so strong so beneficial in the Davao. Davao during the days of Commonwealth area was found to be suitable place to cultivate abaka. Okay, alam niyo abaka yung ginagamit ng um, furniture yata yan. Land fertile, weather benevolent, and unlike vehicle, it was safely located away from the typhoon belt. So di ba, um, mostly kasi yung typhoon belt, um, yung, yung malapit sa coastline, Surigao City, um, Leyte, sa Limapi. And Davao kasi area, yung located siya, parang center talaga siya ng Mindanao. And often times, hindi siya masyadong napupuntahan ng mga typhoon. Mostly kasi agusan yung Surigao, yun yung mga madalas talaga na ako ng typhoon. So, accordingly here, safe siya. And hapon, of course, practical mong isip, no? Doon, doon marami sila. One of the early Japanese settlers was wealthy entrepreneur, yun, ang negosyo, Uta Kyuzubaru, who arrived in the city in 1983. Kasi typical din yun sa, kasi sa business mo. If you are a foreign, foreigner, um, settling a business in um, a country, kinukonsider din kasi yan nila yung places, no, kung saan yung location ng place. Kung um, typhoon belt ba, hindi sila mag-endless dyan. Okay, so ito si Ota, Kizaburo, set up his OTA development company head office in Talumu and later moved to Mental, Davao City, where his abaca business had not only flourished but had also driven the city's economy. Ota, Kizaburo, a Japanese businessman, decided to start an abaca plantation here. Cannon Road to Baguio was, complete, was just completed. The Japanese force was out of work but still in Manila waiting for repatriation. Instead, the returning to Japan where work was uncertain, um, Ota convinced them to move to rural Davao and begin Abaka 
cultivation there. So, yun ang yari. From oral accounts, the area where the Japanese settled to plant abaca was part of tribal land owned by local local tribe, the Bagubus. Sila yung mga tribe sa Tava, mga Bagubus sila dyan, karamihan. Okay? Um, kung siguro sa Marawi, um, Ranao, or something sa Davao, mga Bagubus sila mostly dyan. I think in Cagayan de Oro, if I not mistaken, mostly dyan sa uh, Maranao. Siguro, ay sa Cagayan siguro may um, Bisaya din. But meron silang specific dyan na um, something tribe. Led by the Dato Intal, that's the name Mintal came from. Ota Kyuzaburu was dubbed the father of the development. His success in abaca farming and processing due to other Japanese uh, to Mintal, then the most advanced to all villages with a well-taught of maps similar to an urban plan initiated by Japanese. Japanese built among other school there, cemetery, irrigation facility, ice plant hospital, and hydro power plant with a combination of power, kilowatts, in a to power the whole Dabao, old Dabao city, the hospital built by the Japanese was said to be the biggest and the most modern at the time of that. So, typical to kasi, mostly kasi, during the example of the colonization, um, we were colonized, I think, almost 330 yata, 33 ng mga Spaniards and later on the um, Americans. And mostly sa nalalaman nating um, mga na-build, nagawa, mostly doon natin sila na-associate, ah, baka sa Spanish to na, na, na time or baka sa Americans to. Pero dito kasi sa mental kasi, um, it's historical to, to be, thing to discuss to kasi nga, meron parang part sa Pilipinas, especially in Mindanao, sa atin dito na Japanese yung nag-build. No? Japanese yung nag-uplift nag talaga ng lugar niya, especially, specifically, Mintal Dabao City. So, ito yung picture, photo on the left. Okay, photo on the left shows the decrepit stairs of the hospital na binild ng mga Japanese in Mintal. Ito, Dabao City in early, photo by Antonio L. Cuna. So, the Japanese were forced to flee the city immediately after World War II broke out in 1940s <laughs> for fear that he might be brought by the people for the hostilities that Imperial Army had brought. During the recovery period, however, most of the Japanese houses, monuments, and buildings were destroyed parts to remove the new houses and looted the gold. So, uh, typical kasi ito, um, meron kasing story sa amin, okay, na of course, Yamashita's gold, it was so familiar during the Marcoses. So, ito kasi, oh, marami kasi, actually, marami talagang gold yung Japanese. Kasi, I don't know, before kasi, gold kasi yung kuwan before, um, asset talaga, pinaka-asset. So, meron mga sabi-sabi sa amin, I, I think it's, it's historical thing na may mga kapitbahay kaming naghukay kahit saan lang, lalim na nang nahukay, Kasi daw may gold daw doon ng mga Japanese. So, anyway, it's a um, funny thing to to discuss. But then, meron talagang, marami talagang gold in Japan. So, the Shinto shrines were also all over mental, but remnants of these buildings could no longer be found. Ito yung hospital nila before. The Japanese hospital, they're going to Russia. I zoom this part. Hospital po siya. So, ito din si Uta Kizabaro Mon Monument. Ito yung monumento niya. Uta Kizabaro Monument is still standing within the mental elementary school. However, the nearby triangular um, structure was destroyed by treasure hunters looking for gold. The worst loots of the Japanese imperial army, the obelisk, is known to the pupil as pencil. Actually, this obelisk sign, it is not indeed pencil. Hindi po pencil yung meaning. Okay po, even though malapit yun sa paralan, hindi po talaga pencil, no? tawagan lang po yan. Um, there is this religious connection kasi yan. Ito kasi obilis na to, meron siya religious um, symbolism. Para siyang, um, um, may meron siyang gods na related siya, something sa isang religious. Okay, hindi siya pencil talaga, okay. It's according um, in the news photo by Antonio. 
A Ulta Kizibaro Monument is an important historical structure erected in 1926 in Babu in Kalintan District, Davao City in honor to Ulta Kizibaro. A Japanese entrepreneur who shortly after the turn of the 20th century migrated to Davao City and cultivated vast land around the Hochos, the Bagbot, into a Baka and Coconut Plantation and who is considered by local historians the father of Tabal development. Okay, so, meron din parang Japanese before. Hindi lang po yung gera na isip natin pag Japan during the pre-war, even World War II, pagtutok ng World War II. Meron din Japanese, mga Japanese din na nakagawa ng mabuti sa Japan. So, if, you, if you're going to remember, there was this, I, I think Jessica Soho yata yun, or Rated, Rated K. There was this nang, nang, Japanese na nagbigay ng pera Uh, if you're familiar, check that. Japanese yun. Nabibigay siya na pera kahit saan. Na, Nag-viral yun. 10,000 yung binibigay, 5,000 sa mga tao. Ang dami yung nabigyan. Kasi the story behind that, there was a story, okay, I'm going to share since it, it's related to the war, war er, era. Um, kasi daw, yung malapit na kasi mamat, ang, mamatay yung nabigay dun nung, nung pera. Nandun sa si Japan, inutusan niya yung kakilala niya na ibigay mo itong pera to sa mga Pilipino. Kasi daw, piloto siya before, nang during that um, pre-war yata yun, or pagputok yun ng war, piloto daw siya ng um, aeroplano ng hapon at amin na siya sa sarili niya na may nagawa daw siyang kasalanan, ang dami daw nilang napatay nun na mga Pinoy. Gusto niya bumawi sa mga Pinoy at and then, yung ginawa na binib- bumawi siya lang yung binigyan niya yung pera yung utusan niya, binibigay niya sa mga Pilipino. So, Nag-viral yun. Anyways, born in Yugo, Japan in February 1876, Uta established the Uta Development Company, the first Japanese abaka plantation company in the Philippines. Okay, ito po yung first ha, abaka, Japanese siya si Uta po. Okay, in May 1907. Okay. So, established several other companies as a mental plantation company. Riverside Plantation Company, Tam- Tamolo, and the like. Um, and at age of 41, he died at age of 41. So, ironic po, no? Um, Japanese. Iba sa atin, pag Japanese nga mahaba yung buhay. Pero he died at age of 41. Ang bata. Medyo bata pa. The first wave of Japanese plantation workers set foot in 1903, three, three years after the American forces landed in 1990. 1900s, and immediately thereafter built their own schools, hospital, and road networks, published their own newspapers, erected an assembly, and, and a Shinto shrine. During this time, private farm ownership and large scale business interests such as copra, so copra po, yung bisaya pa, timber, fishing, and imported exports trading by the Japanese had flourished in the Barajo. Ito po yung ginawa na um, Japan talaga, and indeed it developed about Transportation and communication facilities to also much improved. And over time, the local learns from the Japanese the modern techniques of cultivation in agriculture. Hence, agriculture became the main lifeblood of Davao, which paved the way of the province's economic growth and prosperity. So, ito po yung mga abaka. Um, Winniweb kasi to. So, ab- I think, I think ginagawa yung abaka na pang weave yata. Pwede sa furniture. Parang ginawa siya, parang yung mga silk yata yan. If I'm not mistaken, silk, yung medyo parang tela yan siya. Ito yung mga bata sa obilis na akaladan na pencil. Hindi po pencil yan. There is religious significant to that. The, like that, the Ginga Municipal District centered around yung Talindabo City, known as Little Tokyo. Why? It became the center of trade and settlement for Japanese expert rates. Working for OTA, Developing Corporation, and Furukawa Plantation Company, by the 1930s, Dabo was completely under the control of the Japanese and their economic clout, made them politically influential and their population grew to 17, almost 18,000 um, by 1939. And during this period, the then undivided province of Dabo became the world's biggest producer of abaka. So, akalain mo, dito palang mismo pala, Naging worldwide na pala yung known worldwide na yung Davao by the produce, largest producer of abaka with the entire industry practically under Japanese control. 
Despite laws restricting foreign ownership of the land, the Japanese managed to become the largest plantations owners in Davao. They were able to achieve this by using dummies to buy land um, from the local owners and marrying local women, particularly with the Dato lineage. So, ito po yung nangyayari, di ba? Um, if there is a law na hindi pwedeng mag, uh, hindi pwedeng limited lang yung dapat pag ng isang um, tao, maybe socialist yung isang uh, economic aspects ng isang lugar, meaning government lang yung may-ari. By the way, na uh, sociological term. So, yung mangyayari dyan, gagawin sila ng mga dami. Meaning, mag sila ng other, no, I- um, ipapangalan yun sa kanyang business na yan, pero, iba yung nagmamayari at um, nagsa-cycle yung pera sa totoong may-ari na hindi niya pangalan yung buwan niya. Yun yung kumagawa ng dami. Ito rin sa kanila, it's kind of like political, nagmamayari sila ng dato, nung may lineage na dato para, siguro may protection sa kanila or para, maka-manage ng business at sana may connection din at some point kasi before dato kasi yung political before na political um, system before na a somewhat powerful pero right now yung mga dato dato at mga bay hindi na siya uh, masyadong um, kasi like, meron na tayong mga politicians and ang, ang batas din natin ngayon medyo okay na as Japan was becoming a world power having defeated Russia in 1904 and annexed Korea in 1910 and Manchuria in 1931 doubts as to the real intention of the Japan of the Japanese haunted the entire country in 1934 Constitutional Convention Davao delegated um, Pantaleon and Delayo Senior strongly denounced total control of Davao by the Japanese and their unlimited acquisition of the land due to the increasing influence of the Japanese in the trade and economy of the region on March 1936 Davao Congressman Romualdo Kimpo filed House Bill 609 calling for the creation of Davao as a chartered city. So, ito na po nangyari. Nilalaban na po nila yung Davao. The bill sought to break the control of the Japanese and was subsequently passed and signed into the law of the by the President Kizon as Commonwealth Act number 51, formally creating the, Dabao, the city of Davao from the top view, from the town of Davao, Mayo, and the Ginga district. DAG stimulated for the appointment of its local officials um, by the President of the Philippines instead being elected and entrenching the boss of Pinay Kunle in Dabao. So, however, World War II erupted in December 1941. The Japanese planes bombed the city and eventually occupied Davao in 1942 and 1945. The American troops and the Philippine Communist forces had liberated Davao from the Japanese occupation. So, yung Medyo natapos na po yung gera. And whatever progress the local and Japanese migrants made in this little Tokyo and Ginga, musical this documental, was destroyed during the war. The only remnants include the obelisk, yung parang pencil, okay, built in 1986, with the inscription. Okay. So, ito po yun. Ito po yung obelisk. So, ito yung mapa nila before. Mapa, pre-war na mental sa pamayanan ng mapa. So, ito yung mapa nila. Tignan natin. So, ito. Hindi ba hindi masyadong maintindihan. Ito mga tayong tanim. Ito yung obelisk. So, malapit ito. Di paalan yata to. So, ito yung mapa nila before. Siguro, karamihan sa mga tanim-tanim na to. Ipa yung mga abakayan. Okay? So, if, if you're not... Um, actually, guys, pupunta kayo ng mga barangay-barangay. Meron pa ganito silang mga uh, mapping na lugar no meron silang ganyan na mapping ang iba mano-mano pa ang iba computerized na ang iba ang iba ko lang nakita talaga pencil at saka pentel pen lang yung ganyan pero kailangan nila yan okay mapa ng pre-war makikita sa gitna ang kanal na ginawa ng uta may kanal daw tignan natin siguro sa gitna may kanal ito kanal siya ang delbit ng uta corporation ito na yun ng para sa kanyang malawag na branch yun, Abaka. So, ganito kasi yan. So, Abaka left and right, may, may kuan dyan, may kanal, para, um, medyo matubigan, para kanya, no? Ang kompurasyon ng uta, itignan nyo, initial ng ODC, kaliwa, ang tubig, kanyang nagsilibing sentro na ito ng Yesu Mental. Katawin nyo, lalo na, sa panahon, ang dahil nga ligay sa pang, siyang kasalukuyang, magbabago ng palawak. So, ganun yung, kuan niya, agricultural yung dating, 
Okay? So, mawag na free wall muntah. So, ito yun. Pabilis sa Japanese ang pyramid. So, ito yung pyramid. Pabilis sa Japanese ang ito yung abilis. Okay? So, bisa the abilis is the base Japanese pyramid, pyramidal structure honoring the memories of the directors of Uta Plantations Company. The area used to be part of 10,000 hectares na abaka. Abaka plantation which, which included an advanced irrigation canal system. And today, the irrigation canal is being utilized by the um, NPC or National Power Corporation, the OBLIS. The Japanese pyramid and the irrigation canal are located in the grounds of the mental public so, sa katabi ng kuan, katabi ng elementary school. Kaya nasabi nila yun na parang pencil yun. Maybe it's a sign sa school. Ang bata kasi siguro, yun, doon tayo siya may pencil. No, siguro, yun yung naisip nila. Other markers on OBLIS Japanese National who died as a result of double during the work can still be seen in the mental Turil and Kalinan. Pamilya sa akin yung Turil Dabao. I think na um, napuntahan na to ng father ko before na trabaho siya dito. In month of August, Japanese tourists would usually come to these places to visit honor to the dead important Japanese traditions. So, accordingly daw, kung gano'n yung Japanese, they particularly visit mental kasi dun yung mga siguro ninuno nila and local government official led by Little Tokyo Pliwa. So, Pag pumunta ka ng Davao, punta tayo sa Little Tokyo, dun yun sa Mintal. On May 1911, 2009, Peace Pole was planted right beside the marker by the World Peace Prayer Society. So, ito yun. Ito yung Peace Pole. Hmm. My May Peace Prevail on Earth. Ota Kuzaburo. The father of Davao Development. Mark erected to Santri and the Peaceful. Funerals filled with Japanese characters in Mental Cemetery. So, open times dito yung um, nakalibing din. May mga Japanese po yan, mostly. Bagubus and Japanese coexisted peacefully intermarriage resulted in among other things in peace plantation area. Individually, Bagubu plantation outmigrated and today there are hardly any that remain in the mental area. During community area, the Major part of mental was planted abaka mostly. Sa mental talaga. Um, in 1887, the height of agriculture and civic activity more Japanese workers brought in from Okinawa region, Japan. It is said that there was many 11,000 Japanese living and working aside from Filipino employees. The care for much large community facilities were produced to serve population, the schools, hospital, commercial infrastructure facilities to mention the few set up in mental so, unmanaged by the Japanese and Japanese trained Filipinos, managed with the usual Japanese efficiency. So, alam naman natin talaga na pag in Japan, they are hardworking. Okay, the infrastructure led by the Japanese mental was technologically so built that they formed the basis of infrastructure network of modern Davao. It can be said that they set the tone to the development and temporary, temporary to Japan. One example is the water catchment system set up to service hydroelectric power plant. The old mental was survived to be incorporated into the city power system until recent decommissioning. As expected, World War II was the end of the Japanese presence in mental. Those who did not play into the surrounding hills joined in the Imperial Army to be able to continue living in the bomb. Others took new identities. Okay, others changed living then. Para na maging Pilipino na. Physically, very little Japan heritage remains in mental. And what remains is badly the need of repair and conservation. Some older people in the bar you remember take Japanese links, but these links have become clouded memories, no trace of Japanese culture. So, um, ito po yung ito po yung um, dapat ang tayong maintindihan ngayon na hindi talaga sa mga pinakita ng picture, there is still, hindi lang kalaban natin yung Japan before. They mean, um, Although it's political, it's about the power and influence, but still, naging katulong din siya ng um, tumulong siya sa Pilipinas. There was this question raised by um, our professor in history before, Jeremy Undergadwick. Sasabi niya, um, yung pagsakop pa daw sa atin ng mga colonizers, was it um, positive or negative? And there was the answer, negative ma'am, sinakop nila tayo. And sabi ni, parang medyo nag-offend doon si ma'am. 
Kasi daw, kung walang sumakop sa atin, guys, we will like it or not, until now siguro, siguro late pa tayo sa mga technology something, or even in language, or, or the like. Okay? So, siguro yung, yung Marawi, hindi na sakop. But Marawi is, hindi siya sakop and Marawi so proud to that, but Marawi is benefiting from the technological improvement from Japan, from America, na naging colonizer natin. So, it's ironic. So, let's reflect. So, it is most forgotten the days and they mentioned during some conversation, the one we used. So, the story of mental, of the Japanese present and their contribution to contemporary life and culture is totally disregarded. A pity since it is as crucial to Japan, Dabao history. So, di ba, open times, nakakalimutan natin. Sometimes, yung mga history yung natin, Rizal, bali pa ulit-ulit na lang, Rizal, bali pa siya, KKK, yan yung madalas. But there is this Japanese something that happened before, no, na, na baka na natabu na ng history. Mental is an example of forgotten heritage. Mental is commonly known as Little Tokyo. But there is little to remind of one Tokyo. In fact, the town looks like any other typical town along the Philippine highway. No? So, pan typical town lang siya. Pagkita mo, nang sa Pilipinas ka pa rin. Walang mga, um, ano yung mga, wala rin. Simple lang, parang Pilipinas simple lang talaga. Pero, why is it called Little Tokyo? There is something deeper to that. Nothing but a few decaying Japanese monuments, graveyards, still inscribed with Japanese characters in the cemetery, a complete pyramid badly broken down, next to the Chip Obelisk Memorial to um, Ota, Yusaburo, located in what is now public school football field. Only the ruined bottom, the plant steps of the former hospital remains, hidden away in the back of the public market that has taken over the original hospital sites. The heritage possibilities for a for a barrio like Mintal are endless. But first, the residents have to rediscover and relive their Japanese heritage, the very thing that gives them the cultural significance that sets them apart from their neighbors. Okay, so once the cultural heritage is discovered, pride of place sets in. So, baka nakakalimutan na po natin ba? Now, it is the touchstone of the community's redevelopment for additional income generating projects. Example, yung abaka na nangyari. No? Kailangan po history po yan. Think of vegan. Example po, nag-meeting yung mga politician. Pwede nga sabihin politician, before, kita yung number one ng abaka producer in the world. So, pwede lang i-uplift yan. Pwede magkameron ng community redevelopment dyan. Kasi there is this history na natabunan na hindi, na hindi dapat kalimutan talaga. Think of vegan. One of the locals rediscovered the uniqueness of their city doors and facilities opened up. Houses were restored and reused in different purposes, plazas, and streets were improved. New businesses blossomed and tourists started coming in drops. Kasi, um, siguro in the face of um, of economy, maybe investment lang yan, but then, there's no investment na pag wala silang hindi, hindi booming yung tourists. There's no investment. Bakit sila lang i-invest? Wala nang mapupunta dyan. Bakit sila lang i-invest? Wala nang papapasya dyan. So, konektado po yung investment, finance, or growth ng isang lugar economically pag meron pong tourist. Okay? So, Dabao is, and we know, mostly talaga sa mga tourist spots is somewhat related sa topic natin ngayon, which is historical. Na medyo naling talaga sa history. So, kaya lang i-boom yan yung History ito. Dabao is a city of migrants, of people who have settled there from all over the Philippines. Among the earliest are the most influential migrants, groups who are Japanese, who deserve more thanks, no? sabi pa nga dito, who deserve more thanks and recognition from their legacy no? than what we receive today. Okay, so, indeed, no? we must be thankful to Japanese before. Hindi lang yung world war yung naisip natin para tayong Mga ewan. There are many mentals in the Philippines, many towns or district whose uniqueness has been covered by the dust of time. These places are just waiting for you to lead to its rediscovery. Who knows what treasures are waiting to be found? Who knows? So, mayroon ba kayong mga lugar na piling nyo nakalimutan na? But still significant sa history. Maybe I'm going to 
give you an activity, last activity to that. Just wait for my post. So, ito yung mga resources natin. Um, for further readings, can you just click it? And document analysis. Kung gusto mo magbasa pa to have a greater and in-depth understanding, you can click this link na yung research key talaga publications. Okay? Or you may scan the QR code. May QR code talaga dyan. And here's the questions to ponder. Okay? Basahin nyo. What is your impression about the document? No? Does it improve enough information for the development of heritage site? Explain. What government agencies should be tapped to undertake the proposed project? What can you suggest the proponents of proposed project it can be given attention concerned about the governments? Okay. So, I believe, no, um, it's our last topic and we must be thankful talaga sa history at wala, wala tayo ngayon in the modern era without that boring, classic, dusty history. Let's give thanks to them, especially the Japanese. Okay? Yun lang. Thank you. Mag-study kayo.